Mr. Taylor, you say that you had a whirlwind two-week romance with a defendant, and after it ended, she called to tell you that she was pregnant with your child. You say another man was at the hospital for the baby's birth, and therefore your DNA test will come back negative. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Orr, you say you are insulted that Mr. Taylor is even asking for a paternity test. You feel Mr. Taylor is just trying to dodge his responsibility, and you are confident you will prove he is your child's father. Is that yes, correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Taylor, you claim this is not the first time you've tried to get a DNA test from the defendant. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. Um, I have tried to get a DNA test from the moment I found out about Eric, and uh, she has denied it, dodged it every which way she can. Like, she's um, argued with me, said that he looks just like me. Why would I need DNA? Ms. Orr, are you trying to avoid the DNA test for Eric? No, Your Honor. I believe that Michael, if he wants a DNA test, he needs to get it done, not me. It's not my job. And he does... Eric does look like Mr. Taylor. She's lying, Your Honor. No, I'm not, Your Honor. All right, take me back. I want to understand how this relationship started. Well, Where we did you meet? started dating on, um... Offline. I met her offline. What's it, that mean? You're on, you're on a dating website? Site? Dating, dating website. website. Okay, June and then 14th. you all decided to meet in person. Yes. Yes, ma'am, June 14th. Okay. And so you had sex with Mr. Taylor? Yes. Unprotected sex? Yes. After are. meeting on a dating site? Yes. And meeting for the first time? Yes. You all know you wrong. <laughs> Mr. Taylor, you said the relationship lasted two weeks? Yes, Your Honor. And how many times did you have sex within that two weeks span? I had, I had sex with her for like that week, and I had had sex with her a couple more times the next week. And then... He kept coming back. We done slept with each other maybe more than 10 times. <clears throat> no, Your Honor. 10 times that's in two. Then I, that's when I found out I was pregnant. No, Your Honor. Was Mr. Taylor the only man you were intimate with, Ms. Orr? There's other men, but at the time, Mr. Taylor was the only one that I slept with when I was off my birth control. No, Your Honor. During when I got pregnant around August, Your Honor. Okay. Take me to the moment where you realize you're pregnant. I realized you... when I was pregnant when I went to my doctor's appointment September the 1st... Okay. ...of 2016. And when you realize you're pregnant, do you tell Mr. Taylor? Do you call him? Are you yes, all still call... even in contact? No, I, I call him. I contact him through Facebook to let him know I'm pregnant. No, she So, wait not, a minute. By the time you... Let me know she was pregnant. She called me over the phone to tell me she was pregnant. Okay, then again... And that's when Mr. Taylor for called DNA. for a DNA test. Did you say the baby is yours or could be yours? Could be yours. No. Could be. No, it is no, yours. No, Your Honor. She yes. has done nothing but sit here and tell me this is no. nothing but my no. child. I have been here. She has ran from the DNA. If it's such doubt and everything, if he is mine, why do you run from a DNA test? I do Mr. not know. Mr. Taylor also told me to take him to court. That's why we're here today. Because I'm the one taking him to court. I would Find never have doubted him if son. I did not have other possibilities. Well, features. Mr. Never Taylor, I, hold on, but I gotta give her credit. Ms. Orr did show up today. And that's not an easy thing to do. Because I'm gonna ask the tough questions. And I'm gonna demand answers. So... You just said two different things standing right here in this courtroom, Ms. Orr. You said, I told him it could be, then you said, I told him it is. Which one is it? It is. Mr. Taylor, do you remember the story going that way? Um, she told me it was mine, yes, but I did not agree to them terms, no, because I, myself, <laughs> knew of three other different possibilities. No, there's no with. other three It's conception, not a contract. <laughs> Jerome, he said he did not agree to those terms, okay? Okay. <laughs> So, at that moment, what you're saying is, is you did not believe that right, you were the right, only right. possible Sorry. father. I didn't know anything. Did right. you believe, Mr. Taylor, you were one of the possible fathers? I did. When did you find out the baby was born? I found out the baby was born a week after. Oh, a week after the here. baby was born. Right. So, son... wait a minute, Ms. Orr. Now, you are certain Mr. Taylor is your child's biological father. You go into labor and you don't even give him a call. You give him... Exactly. You, you reach out on another... Facebook to say, I'm pregnant with your baby. You don't reach out on Facebook to say, I'm having your baby right everything, now? Everything happened no. so fast. I no, had health Honor. problems. You didn't. My son was born six weeks early. And I was going to wait till Eric got out the hospital. Okay, but still, no, it took a whole week 
Yes. For you to get in contact with him? Yes. He's for lucky, you to tell he's lucky that I even told him because he wasn't there during the pregnancy or none of my doctor's appointments. Okay, so wait. I wasn't there you're... because she had told me about the other possibilities that could be Eric's dad. Oh, what no. did she tell you about other possibilities, you got Mr. No Taylor? Clue. Because I was told by the nurse there was another man in her room. That was when a friend she guy. Had this child. Really? He was a friend guy. Was this a, a friend. friend you've been intimate with in the past? No. So why is he up at the hospital? Because he's supposed to be like the godfather of my son. How did you have time to notify the godfather and not the biological father? A family member contact my friend. You're accusing him of not being there, and yet you are blocking him from being there at the most important moment. I don't understand. Because the nurses was talking to me at the time. I couldn't really talk to my family members. The nurses then were I... talking to you for a week straight? Telling me everything, pretty much. I don't know if she tested fine uh, right now or test a line, but we'll see in a minute. Your Honor, I have What is that right you're holding here. up, Mr. Taylor? This is evidence from where I had first found out about Eric. Let me see that and evidence. Jerome, will you hand it to me, please? I was in the hospital with Eric when I first to go went to meet him. This one says, okay. little surprise for who didn't know, met my son Eric for the first time tonight. So blessed. Keep negativity to yourself. And this Your is Honor. you holding baby Eric. Your Honor. And then the next one you say, father like son with a heart. And you're holding the baby. Right, Your Honor. That was on her Facebook. And then the next one says, love my son. Yes, Your Honor. And then the I... next one says, first time me feeding him. So, Mr. Taylor, I will say this. The post you put on Facebook, they looked like you do want to be a part of this child's life. If you are the biological father, you intend to be a part of baby Eric's life? I've been here since, like, since I found out about him. Mr. I was not raised up with my dad. I did not know of my dad until I was 14 years old. I don't think any child deserves to grow up without a dad. For the fact that she did not tell me until Eric was a week old, I am unbelievably shocked. I do not know why. I don't know why I deserve it. What I want to understand is, you're at the hospital, you take these beautiful photos, right. post them up. What happens at the hospital that would make you retract all of this? For the fact of she had made me had doubt that he was not mine. How I did she asked. give you that doubt? Because she told me to take the pictures of her son Ooh. off Facebook. Your Honor, she's basically harassed me that this is nothing but my child. I have known from day one this is your child. She has messaged me constantly. This is your child. Why won't you answer the phone for your child? Yes, I and have. And then you she put the pictures said, up of hey. your child and she tells you to take right. them down. Oh, so Miss Orr, wait a minute now. You are maintaining here in court that he is the biological father. Why would you tell him to take the pictures of your son because down? Me. Isn't it your son together? Because Mr. Taylor, he will still haul a DNA test. I'm sitting there going to the hospital every night with Eric, staying there, feeding him, making sure he gets well and get out of the hospital. He's in a NICU six weeks early. And then Mr. Taylor sit here, his DNA. Oh, I love my son. That makes... That's funny right there because you put that stuff on Facebook. You sit there take pictures with, DNA, my, like with Eric because... on Facebook. You take pictures with him and then put him on Facebook talking about, oh, I love my son and all this. Which one is it? You want a DNA or do you want to be in Eric's life? What is that you're holding up right there? And there's a um, picture of a comparison that she had sent me of me. Let me see that, Jerome. And Eric, and another possibility of the other guy to Eric. That's you on the bottom right. That's baby right. Eric in the corners. Yes, Your Honor. And another man is on the top left? Yes, Your Honor. Why do you send them a collage of pictures with the baby and another man? To let him know. Eric does not look like another man. Where'd you pull this man out of? Thin air? <laughs> no, Your Honor. That is one of my ex. Your Honor, okay. the reason why I've been so, asking for DNA. Okay. And this is someone Mr. Taylor was accusing you of having sex with as well, and he was saying that this could possibly be baby Eric's biological father? Yes. I mean, look, that picture was not going to help the situation. Uh, it didn't. Uh, I'm sure it only fueled your doubt at that point. Your Honor, she has went as far as, like, saying the child had a crooked penis. <laughs> and I have a crooked penis. 
She asked me if I had one. I said yes. She said, so how can you deny that this is your son? So she said, All I have to say is I hope nobody that? brought an exhibit. <laughs> Your Honor, my son could not get circumcised because he was over 90 degrees. Miss Orr, did you say that your baby has a crooked penis? And that was a point of proof. No, Your Honor, not a point She's of lying, proof. Your Honor. To let him know that his son is going to be having surgery in August. Then why would she ask? Is that how you took it, Mr. Taylor? Why would she ask? Why would she ask? Well, I thought she would know. Right? <laughs> but I ain't want to gossip. <laughs> Did you think it was a way to avoid the DNA test again, I think, is what I really want to know. Yeah, sure. Is right. that what you're... Because you, you have maintained in this case she has avoided this test at every cost until now. Yeah, sure. So do you feel like that was the last-ditch effort to say... Now, look, you know the baby has this f- physical characteristic, and do you? Yes, you do? Okay, now. That's what you're thinking? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Well, the court wanted to know, honestly, whether or not this physical characteristic is something that could be tied to genetics. So we'd like to call upon an expert right now. Jerome, can you please escort Dr. Eddie Richardson, Jr. into the courtroom, please? Thank you. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. We are here discussing the paternity of uh, baby Eric. And his mother has indicated that the child was born with a certain characteristic, and it would be a crooked penis. Okay. She then asked the potential father if he possessed the same characteristic. The father indicated that he did. This led the court to ask, what is this? How does it happen? And is it linked to genetics? Okay. Okay. Well, there's actually two different conditions we're talking about here. Okay. One actually happens in babies and infants, and the other one happens in older adults. So the first one is cordase, which actually happens in infants, which is actually a structural and a developmental problem. The uh, pyridios disease actually occurs in adolescents and older men. That's from microtrauma. Both have a little bit of a genetic component, but it's sort of when they're developing, so it's a small component. So if the father and the son are both born with it, is it an indicator of paternity? Based on my medical opinion, it would be highly unlikely but possible because the one is more of a structural problem that's actually occurring and they haven't been able to conclude with any real evidence that both of these are going to cause this. But there are some, as I said, on the structural problem, the underlying uh, connective tissue problem, which would be a genetic problem. But based on just a curvature of a penis, it would be hard for me to determine uh, paternity from that. Not impossible, but not necessarily an indicator. Right. I Understood. would agree with that. Understood. Well, Ms. Orr, do you still stand by the fact that Mr. Taylor is your child's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. No other possibilities? No, Your Honor. Mr. Taylor... Do you still stand by your position that you believe you are not baby Eric's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. Nothing you've heard in this testimony today has changed your mind? No, Your Honor. I think we're ready for the results. Jerome? Yes. Go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Taylor versus Orr. When it comes to six-week-old Eric Orr, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Taylor, you are not the father. Give me hand. Calm down, Mr. Taylor. I know this was disappointing. I could tell from the pictures you had formed a bond with the baby. I wish I never knew her. (laughs) I don't see how how that's... So even though you had doubts, it is obvious you were coming here hoping to be wrong. 
Right. But you were right to have questions. Ms. Orr, do you have something you'd like to say? I'm sorry that I got your hopes up that Eric was yours. And I will say this, Ms. Orr, this courtroom exists because too often the mothers keep secrets about other possibilities that lead to this level of sadness, confusion, and real trauma. I mean, Mr. Taylor is very affected and I can see that. Do you know who Eric's <laughs> biological father is? No, Your Honor. Is there any chance it was your ex, the other guy in the picture? Possibly. Okay. Mr. Gray, you are suing your wife and the mother of your daughter for a paternity test. You and your parents claim Mrs. Gray lied to you about her sexual past, and since discovering the truth about her, you now all fear the baby is not your biological daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Gray, you argue that your husband is destroying your marriage because he no longer trusts you. You claim that your in-laws' influence is causing your husband to deny his child. You also say your husband has not stepped up financially in the past. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Gray, what was your first impression of your daughter-in-law? Well, considering the fact that the first time that she come to our home, uh, that particular day, she and Tanner went to the bedroom and had unprotected sex. Ooh. Okay. Uh, uh, how old were they when... She was 14 and he was 15 years uh. old. Okay. Okay, Let me so... get my mouth off the ground. Okay. They went to his bedroom... Yes, ma'am. ...and had sex. Yes, ma'am. Okay, continue. Okay, within about three weeks, they called me into the bedroom. She explained to me that she was late on her period. I looked around for a few things to throw, and instead I went to the store and I got a pregnancy test, and I come back, tossed it at her, asked her if she knew how to use it, considering she was only 14 years old. And uh, she said yes. She went to the bathroom, brought it back to me, and it was positive. Okay. You know what I want? I want to hear a little bit about your son before I move on to you, Mr. Gray. What was he like okay. before? Tanner was enrolled in school. He'd always been involved in sports, mm -hmm. basketball, uh, popular child. He always made very good decisions. He had had a relationship before. Uh, mm -hmm. I had furnished him with a condom in case he ever wanted to have sex. So you had had a discussion with him about absolutely, responsibility? Absolutely, absolutely, positively. He had a complete goal. He was going to be a police officer, and everything changed. Now, Mr. Gray, I want to bring you in here because I want to find out from you how this relationship started with Ms. Gray. Yes, Your Honor. Caitlin and I, we met through Facebook. We went out on a first date to a basketball game. Uh, about a week later, we had our second date and she came to my mother's house. Uh, she stayed for a couple days and... Oh, the second date lasts a couple days? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Wow! At, at 15 and 14 years old, two-day dates? Never heard of such. Okay. Yes, and they were supposed to be sleeping by the Christmas tree. Well, that didn't go over so well. Whoa! Okay. So... And considering the fact of, of her family's background and considering the fact of what Tanner's told me about her previous uh, boyfriends and girlfriends, I'm not sure that the baby could be his because I felt like, you know, he was the pick of the litter. Well, let me ask Mr. Gray. I mean, you're a handsome young man and definitely I can see how any mom thinks their son is the pick of the litter. I see that. But I want to know from you. When you met Mrs. Gray, you obviously were interested in her. You took her on date. Yes, ma'am. You had a two-day second date. <laughs> when you found out that she was pregnant, did you feel like this could possibly be my child? N no, I didn't because I... When, when she was... 14 years old, that, and I was 15, we decided to have sex, and I figured if she was gonna have sex with me on her second date at my house at such a young age, why wouldn't she have sex with somebody else? I knew for a fact that I had details on reasons why the baby couldn't be mine, and... Specifically why? How about when her family tried to explain to you that if the baby comes out black, that it's oh. still yours? Oh. Okay? And they had that's an this. interesting fact, even for the court. Yes, yes. I'm okay. like, it took me and my oldest daughter two days to convince him that that was not the truth. That's math that just doesn't add up, right? I, I, I think so. Uh, well, considering the fact that I'm we had agreed... I'm going to bring you in just one second, Ms. Gray. Just one second. 
I just want Mr. Gray to finish this thought, then I'm going to give you a chance to answer that. What did she ask you to do on your very first sexual she told, experience? She told me that she wanted to have a baby with me. Okay, now this is the moment that I want to hear from you, Ms. Gray. Is that true? Did you say on that date, that second long date <laughs> at 14 and 15, I'm still not over that, that you wanted to have a baby? Yes, Your Honor, but he also agreed to because obviously I turned up pregnant. So if he didn't oh. agree to it, then I mean... So you all are 14 he agreed. and 15 years old, two babies making a decision that y'all gonna have a baby. Yeah. Why is it that you, not only are you engaging in adult activity, but you're talking about becoming parents? Why? Because you all feel like you hit it off so much? What's the reason for this? I'm not understanding this. Because she well, had your a Honor, terrible home life. Horrible home life. She needed out of that. I want to hear from you, Ms. Gray. Well, Your Honor, um, considering the fact that during the heat of the moment, I had said something about, you know, getting pregnant, and Tanner, uh, you know, he seemed like that he was agreeing with me, and during the heat of the moment, he got me pregnant. So, I mean... So it really wasn't a good decision. It was a mutual agreement. A mutual agreement based upon irresponsibility <laughs> and bad decision-making. <laughs> was it a mutual agreement, Mr. Gray? Your Honor, dur during the moment, it, it was a mutual agreement, yes, but about doubt, you know, I had gotten and broken into her email accounts and two to four weeks prior to our first date, actually, she had sexual conversations with numerous guys. And I had proof of that. Uh, I had sat her down and I told her all about that. And uh, she, first she denied it. Uh, I got into the email again to show her what I had found. And uh, the information was not there. I had a family member that was actually a computer engineer. Mm -hmm. And he helped me get all of those emails back. She started crying and bawling, and uh, she admitted to it. She actually admitted to sleeping with six other people than me. Oh! You discovered emails with six other guys? She admitted to me sleeping with six other guys. How many other men the, did you see on the email? The emails, there was quite a bit that she was just having sexual conversations with two to four uh, weeks prior. Sexual with, conversations? Yes, about having sex with each other. Oh! oh. And then when I demanded a DNA test, I demanded it. I set him down. I'm his mother. I have that right. He was underage. Okay? His, her and her family did everything in the world to convince him that it would make him a bad person if he did not trust her enough to have that DNA test. So he did not have that DNA test against my wishes. Your Honor, I mean, there's no question denying these pictures. They look just alike. They both have big ears. I mean... I don't Your have Honor, big ears I would at like all. To say that, that picture of, of Tanner right there looks like identical to my four-year-old who has a different father. So, when you look at this picture, do you see a resemblance, Mr. Gray? <clears throat> a little bit, but I still have that doubt. You have that doubt. I do have that doubt. We because you said at some point after you confronted her about these emails, she looks at you and tells you, "Yeah, I slept with six other people." Yes, ma'am. Is this true, Ms. Gray? Yes, Your Honor, it is. But also, She's considering trying to trap fact... my son. My son was the best one out of the ones in which she slept with. Oh. Well, considering the fact she... we had a beautiful, nice six bedroom home, and she seen that, and she took advantage of that. So, in your opinion, she came over on that second date, and that Christmas tree was sparkling. Absolutely. Right? And the six bedrooms. Those big presents look, are glistening. Throw pillows like on the bed. The and she got in her mind, I'm going to make this long term. Yes, That's your account? Yes, Your Honor. Did you feel that, Mr. Gray? Yes, ma'am. The same exact one. Now, you have a witness. Your stepfather's here. Please, please step up to the podium, yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. State uh, your name. Uh, Chris Boyd, Jacqueline's husband. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Yes, I found out recently that she had made a statement to, to my family members that she was pregnant when she met Tanner. You know, he was 14, 15 at the time. Well, you Your know, Honor, Your Honor, like I said before, it wasn't just me. It takes two. But, it takes two. But, Your Honor, at 14 years well, old. It usually takes two that are in a monogamous relationship. It doesn't take one that's sleeping with six people versus one on one. Your Honor, they're they're together. He's doing everything he can to support him, support him, his his wife, and his baby. And then he calls me on the phone and says, "I just got done smashing." Caitlin's phone. I said, really? Why? He goes, I caught her talking to other guys again. 
I said, really? He goes, yep. 30 minutes later, 30 minutes, he calls me back up. He says, I'm going to be the glue that holds this family together. I said, what do you mean? I said, is she still giving you sex or what? I said, I can't believe that, that she, you've changed your mind within 30 minutes. One minute you're ready to walk out, next minute, you, you know, and I'm trying to make heads or tails of what's going on. She has a negative force that brings him down to her family's level. And, you know, he was raised on a different level than her family was, you know, like... Level. Like, I don't like, like, like school, down, college, morals. He had, he had, you know, so you're accusing goals. her of not having a family that... Oh, I'm not morals. accusing it. That is a fact. So, Ms. Gray, I have to ask you, you can understand, can't you, why Mr. Gray may have doubt about your child considering you admitted to sleeping with six other young men. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. I want to hear from your witness, Ms. Gray. Okay. You have your grandmother, yes, Ms. Wolhart, here yes. by Skype. Yes. Okay. Can we please have Ms. Wolhart? Good morning. Good morning. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. I'd like to ask you, what is it about this situation that is upsetting you so much that you are agreeing to be here by Skype? Your Honor, I'm upset that when they were broke up for three months, I'm the one that bought the diapers and the food and the... I supported that well, child for three years. I bought her school supplies, school clothes, drove her back and forth to college, well, bought her food, bought her tampons. Okay, let's hear from everything. I don't know. She could have come and live with somebody, and you told her father at the hospital that you were going to let her live in your house. She had to live somewhere. Okay, I want to understand from you specifically. Now, it seems like you are upset with Mr. Gray's mother. What is it specifically that you feel like she's done or has not done? Well, another thing, being teenagers, they would have never left the living room, for one, if I was at home. <laughs> that was I'll tell you what, I might be old school, Ms. Gray, but I have to say I cannot agree more with Ms. Wolhart. I was not allowed <laughs> to have boy company and further he, than the front room, and, and it was before. supervised. He had been in a bedroom before. And that didn't ever happen before well, because he had a car. But my that point is this: maybe that girl it didn't takes have sex, two but... people to do this tango. They've done. Yes, it does. And therefore, although you continually say that Ms. Gray is the culprit, she's the one to blame. She's the manipulative one. No, she's, she's the one, just one that the one that's had the multiple affairs or, out of or, the litter of men. Your son went on right on down the alley and jumped on in. Thank you, Ms. Wolhart. You're welcome. Okay. You all end up getting married. Yes, we did. You're married now. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Now, this is interesting to me because you all have barely looked at one another. This entire time, you've presented your stories to the court. This situation has really destroyed not just your marriage, but your relationships with each other's families as well. Am well, I correct? Most definitely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, which I would have never had a family relationship with her family anyway. I've never... So the results of this test, this DNA test, is going to determine the future of your family. I see you becoming very emotional, <laughs> Ms. Gray. Tell me what you feel. <laughs> I'm listening. I just know for a fact that Keely is Tanner's... <laughs> And he could be any other person. And I know that for a fact, because if I had been pregnant for six months, I would have known. I would have known that I was pregnant. But I don't want this whole subject to destroy our family. I want to stay with Tanner. I want Keely to be with both her mom and father. And I not want to have a relationship with my mother-in-law. I want my family to get along with Tanner. And I don't want this whole thing to just, you know, be a big issue and cause us to, you know, get a divorce or anything. And I, I love Kate and I love Keely, and I pray to God that Keely is Tanner's. I pray to God so that So you girl. do want... I, I pray to God that that little... Yes, I, I have done everything in the world for her and her. Everything, financially but and now everything. Now, you're not...
not just saying you want the child to be your sons because you put out so much money and time. I love You her. love. I love Keely. I love Keely. <laughs> What's not to love? Exactly. Absolutely exactly. beautiful. She's she's precious. But I've had to hold my reserve with Keely because I have to know the truth out of all this stuff that's been going on. I want to know the truth. So you feel like as a grandmother, you kind yes. of been holding back. You yes. love her. I've had you to provide hold for back. her. I love her more than any anything in the world. I I, I love her to death. And Mr. Gray, tell the court what do you want from this situation? I, I want the baby to be mine. I love Keely with all my heart. I've supported her since the day she was born, and I believe, rather or not she is mine or not, that Kaylin best know that I'm still the father, regardless of the situation. All right, I think I've heard enough from everyone. Uh, it's time for the results. Jerome, do you have the envelope? I do, Your Honor. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Gray. I have the results in my hand. I know each of you are very interested to find out who, in fact, Keely Gray's father truly is. We thank our friends at DNA Diagnostics for the preparation of these results. In the case of Gray versus Gray, when it comes to Keely, Mr. Gray, you are her father. I love you guys so much. Now that's what I want to see. That is a wonderful example of what the blessing of a beautiful, innocent child can do for a family. But I want to caution you both. You all started down the path to adulthood way too early. Let's be very honest. 14 and 15 years old, hemmed up in bedrooms with closed doors by yourself, I don't see that. That is not appropriate. Now that you are here and you've got married because you tried to do the right thing. I will give you that, and I commend you for that. You have to understand that you've brought a child into the world, you are husband and wife, and you are parents. Are we clear? Yes, Your Honor. Make the best life for your child. Well, congratulations to all of you, I will say, and I wish you the best of luck. Court is adjourned.